What's up, everybody? TJ here. Real quick before we get started with the episode, I'm testing out a new feature called Fan Mail, which is where you can actually text me from the episode that you're listening to. So as you're listening to this, go over to the episode description and right there at the beginning, you're going to see some text that says, send me a text message. Go ahead, click that. Let me know what you think about the podcast so far. Let me know of any questions, concerns, anything you might have. I love to hear from you. So go ahead, hit that up. I'm excited to read your text and let's get started with the episode. We have more leverage to talk to our chiefs and to communicate that this stuff isn't the devil's lettuce anymore. But it does not mean that you're allowed to use it. It doesn't mean that it's going to be sold in CVS next year. You could have a potential for a pharmaceutical company to make it, but it's years away. Welcome to the Keep the Promise podcast, where we help build resilient and well-rounded firefighters. And you know what's interesting? So I, I spoke um, with an attorney about this. Uh, which, you know, if anybody's listening to this and they're thinking about policy in their state or they're trying to go down that route, talk to a lawyer, not not us. But, you know, the the interesting Fact. thing was when I spoke to a lawyer in Florida about this, they're like, that wouldn't work in Florida. The precedent, I Why guess, not? is different here. And the way our law is written, um, it, it's it's weird. So Florida a first responder doesn't have that protection. And in, for whatever reason, in the law in the state of New York and New Jersey, they do. Now, because of that, Florida is, there's a bill as of last October, it's been on the floor for almost a year, that specifically protects first responders. The same thing Virginia just did. Virginia just passed that law that said first responders are protected and they're allowed to use marijuana despite of what their employer has for a rule. They, I don't know if it's copied and pasted exactly. I haven't read the entire Virginia bill, but I read... Uh, the, the the description of it, and I did open the bill up, and the Florida one's pretty damn similar. So, um, the idea would be, if if a state starts to allow marijuana, whether it's federally legal or not, you could have um, an employer say, "I don't care what you say. This is a condition of employment. So, fight me. <laughs> you know, come at me. What are you going to do about it? This." outlines at the state level saying you can't do that it's illegal for that for that reason discrimination so um ultimately i mean it, it comes down state state to state as of now and i would even be curious after it becomes federally legal if you'll still see those fights break out in places like um iowa um somebody mentioned indiana you know um allowing first responders to use it or not trying to fight it because you're going to have you're going to have elected officials at the top of each state going Okay, I didn't want marijuana in the first place, but now it's legal. Um, so we're going to make sure that our first responders can't use it, so that you know they're not showing up to work intoxicated, um, which is a very superficial way to look at it. Because we could be doing that right now with every other medication that we're prescribed and alcohol. So it's kind of kind of ironic. Not the like landslide victory that we not thought it was really. going to be, huh? Um, but it's not nothing, you know? It's a good start, right? Okay, so let me pick your brain a little bit more. I am Joe Schmo, working in West Podunk Fire Department. I have a collective bargaining agreement. I have a union. Fairly strong. We get along with management. We are going to try to push to be able to use marijuana. Our state allows it. Like it's recreational. What do I do? Well, um, so the, there's there's a couple of things that would happen. You can try to have open communication with your department and ask, is this going to get me in trouble? Um, some people don't even want to do that because it puts them on the radar. And if it puts them on the radar, then they're worried, like, are they going to just start drug testing me? Are they going to try to come after me? Black Sheep Italian, baby. Um, if, if you, um, if you want to go the very, very aggressive route, which is kind of what happened in Buffalo, there are people that would say, look, I know that I want to take a principled stance on this. I'm going to use this. And if they try to fire me, I'm going to fight them. 
and then it starts the cascade that changes everything. Uh, or ignore it. I mean, you know, the 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 issue with pers- the issue with medical marijuana is everyone thinks it's an actual prescription, but it's not. It's a recommendation from a doctor. It's a loophole. The DEA does not allow, uh, well, they used to not allow like Schedule One uh, marijuana, and um, as a prescription because there is no FDA approved medication for marijuana. Like, what are you prescribing? You know, it's a plan. So it basically just says, this piece of paper says that Joe Schmo is not going to get arrested for carrying marijuana in this state because the state allowed this doctor to write this and set up a system so that he can evaluate somebody, say that the marijuana is indicated, that he's going to oversee their use, and they have to pay for that right, that license. The doctor has to pay for a license to, to be able to do that, and the patient has to pay for that prescription yearly they also won't let you re renew your concealed weapons permit if you have that so um from what i understand again not a lawyer but i've read that uh so there are stipulations so like because it's kind of a loophole and it really isn't a prescription all these people that the argument the argument that firemen make where they where they say hey how are you going to stop me from getting a prescription from my doctor it's not a prescription that's how, you know, so it's a hard one. The The issue would be if it's recreationally legal in your state and you are prohibited from using it, especially if, if it's um, prescribed. So if it's not recreational in your state and it's only medicinal, it might not be discrimination. You know, it depends on, depends on what um, precedent was set in your state or, you know, what laws are in place. But I think it would be even easier if if it uh, if it was recreational and you had that prescription. So I hate saying the answer is it depends, but I mean, there's there's so many places that that have these really strict rules, and there's so many places that kind of don't now. You know, like um, there are departments in Oregon and in California that went to the oral oral fluid test years ago, where you come in and you do a. Uh, you go in for random drug testing, they just swab your cheek. And they're like, hey, this says that you might have had marijuana in the last 24 hours. Let's draw your blood. And they draw blood and they'll send it off and they'd be like, it's a really, really tiny amount, man. There's no there's no way you're high right now. Or they send like a field sobriety officer to your to your station and they do like a like a they're trained. I don't know what that test is. Everyone jokes. They're like, they put Cheetos in front of you, and it, you're the Cheeto. I was gonna say they catch me yes. with my hand in a Doritos Fire. bag. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, there's other ways to do it, but if you think about all the shit that people have to write for a policy to be able to do that, they just don't. They don't want to have to deal with that. There's no breathalyzer. Yet, Yet. like I said, I've talked to a lot of really smart people. And I'm like, how far away are we from this? And they're like, we're not close. Like, okay. Because I brought up, there's one, I think it's called like the the Badger. It's uh, it's breathalyzer. It's, um, hey, Sounds ooh, more like a sex toy, be. buddy. Anything's a sex toy if you're brave enough. Um, that's, that's the cold open right there. Cut Jeez. that clip and open with that shit. Um, God, you can tell I'm about to go on vacation. I'm just like, I'm just letting it on. You are done. So, you know, uh, yeah, that thing is off a little bit. Um, it's it's not as accurate. Uh, so same thing, man. It's like in, until we have a, a whole consensus from the scientific community. And there, listen, there are people that want it, man. If, if somebody can come up with a THC breathalyzer, you will, you're going to, your grandkids are not going to have to work. I think you're going to be fine, you know? Absolute fact. So wow, we um somehow ended up sex toys delving into yeah, the world that's of uh, where it sex always toys. Goes. But um, <laughs> fucking firemen are firemen everywhere, uh, regardless of yeah. what they're talking about, where they are. It always ends up being hey. something highly inappropriate. But the TLDR, the too long didn't read for the audience. Hey, we got marijuana. When I say we, the DEA rescheduled marijuana from. Schedule one to schedule three. Give me the quick synopsis. What the fuck does it um, mean to us? We have more leverage to talk to our chiefs and to communicate that this stuff 
isn't, you know, the devil's lettuce anymore. But it does not mean that you're allowed to use it. It doesn't mean that it's going to be sold in CVS next year. You could have a potential for a pharmaceutical company to make it, but it's years away. That's ultimately what it is. Boom. And we're definitely not lawyers. We're definitely, I mean, you're a role model. I'm definitely not. So we're definitely not advocating that you go out and try to make a grandstand without doing your due diligence. And if you're like that that man in Buffalo fighting the system, go forth. But we are not telling you to, hey, it got rescheduled, roll up that joint, show up, you know, with your Snoop Dogg t-shirt and tell the chief to eat a bag of dicks. Don't do that. You can do it. Don't Just don't say, we, don't say we told don't you Don't lose to. this awesome. I mean, people will be like, oh, fucking TJ told you to do it. Yeah, probably. They'll believe that one. So, okay. Status quo, pretty much. Marijuana might be in, might be out. But we have the alternative. Talk to me about this CBD. This is where I wonder what the future holds for CBD. Um, because the initial... The initial impression is if THC becomes legal, why do I need to use CBD anymore? Uh, there's two reasons, sleep and inflammation. THC doesn't help with either of those. The first one, sleep. Man, I I wish I had like a pre-recorded message that I could just play to people. The older they are, the harder it is to have this conversation. Either because of my age or because they just they, they have personal experience and they don't want to believe me. Um, they're rooted in their biases, but when I tell them THC is not good for sleep, they think I'm an idiot. And they're like, okay, I don't know what you've used, Junior, but back in my day, I used to knock the fuck out. And I'm like, back in your day, marijuana is 40% CBD. So you didn't know this, but you were actually using a lot of CBD. All these guys, these old timers that use THC now or they use marijuana, they're like, whoa, this stuff is like crazy stronger like you know what that is they bred marijuana for years to have less cbd and more thc this is why you do not extract cbd from marijuana because you would need kilograms kilograms and kilograms of flour just to make one kilogram of, of cbd isolate it just ain't there so for sleep um cbd improves REM sleep overall it does that in a few ways turning off parts of your brain that are talking too loud and it reduces your body temperature, which are both really important for sleep. Reducing anxiety is good for sleep. And these things are all shown in a lot of different studies. And then inflammation. THC just does not reduce inflammation. CBD does. So those two things alone are going to um, take the cake. What happens, and, and you know, um, our buddy Sean O'Leary from Pittsburgh you know, when they first got THC, everyone started using it like recreationally, uh, as well as, you know, for a lot of symptoms of stress and PTSD, Pittsburgh sees some shit and, and they have, um, a lot of drugs, you know, and, and, uh, so they are trying to like reduce that and they did successfully. Their numbers are amazing. But then over time, like Sean told me, I don't use pure THC anymore. He's like, if I want to get good sleep, I have to mix a lot of CBD in with it. It's actually a majority CBD and small amount of THC. Um, combine that with the fact, if I really had to blow your mind, that, uh, CBD tends to, it's, it, the, the, the jury's still out, but it looks like it may inhibit some of the THC use. So the reason people might be getting good sleep when they take that combo is actually because the THC relaxes them, but it does not, um, create as much of a high or inhibit your REM like, like it would have if, if CBD wasn't there. So CBD acts as that little, uh, I guess, filter. You know, it acts like as a wall to help that, that yeah. to blunt those negative effects. And, uh, especially chronic use of, of THC, it, it just screws up your REM. Um, so with, with that, I mean, that's, that is why we are the alternative. Is CBD good for pain? Not necessarily. It's, it's better for inflammation. So if your pain is from inflammation, it's good, but there's where THC really has an edge on CBD and, uh, you know, along with like some of the, the benefits, um, for relaxation and, you know, just like immediate effect, uh, that THC has. So that, that is, that is why we are an alternative, um, to THC. It, it's really with those other, those other things The 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 real reason I think people want THC to be legal is 
not necessarily because they want to smoke, they want to, you know, use a, a gummy and get high or whatever. If you've ever been into a dispensary and seen the options that they have and the education and the quality that they have, that's where people want to, to, to go to be able to ask a question and to say like, hey, I don't want to feel high, but I need something to cut down on my Oxycontin use or my fentanyl use or whatever. So what do you got? By the way, I work during the day, you know, perfect. Here, come over here, you know, or they'll say, Hey, I just want to be high. This is recreational for me. I'm not, I'm, I don't want to buy booze at all anymore. I'm done drinking. I just want to, I just want to be intoxicated from marijuana when I get home from work and, and have a drink instead of doing that. I want, but I want to, you know, I want to buzz. Perfect. Come this way. So that to me is where it's, where it's at. And, uh, if they went down to that level with it, um, I think, you know, people would still have a, have a need for CBD quite a bit. And, um, they just don't know it yet because the education on that isn't there. Everyone thinks that CBD is from marijuana. You know, it's, I was just listening to a, somebody sent me one of these videos. You ever heard of Z dog, the doctor? He does like parody videos. I have You're going to see a post that no. I make. I'm, I don't know how this is going to go, man, but I'm tearing this guy apart for like 21 minutes. Fucking do he, it. He's talking about CBD and I feel really uncomfortable, uh, honestly, um, trying to correct a doctor, but he's just flat out wrong on so many things. And I bring a shit ton of data and studies that conflict exactly what he's saying. But, um, you know, I guess where I'm going with that is just the education really, I don't know, there, there's not a lot of people speaking up for the, for the compound CBD. And they, they, he was one that was saying like, well, yeah, you know, marijuana, I mean, dude, they've never extracted CBD from marijuana in, in, in the six years this industry has been around. We just don't do it. it it's not profitable. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, the lack of understanding with that is very, very present. So, um, you know, as an alternative, very good, but only for really specific things. I can definitely attest to the sleeping part of it, the quieting those voices in the head, the kind of like lowering the volume button. And I swear by it because it takes a while to build up the CBD in your, in your body, especially given the job of firefighters, especially given the stresses of the job and the strains and everything that, that we go through. And once you kind of reach that that like cruising altitude of like, Hey, I've been doing consistently for a few days. It'll, it doesn't knock me out, but maybe at most 20 minutes after taking it. Like I brush my teeth, take my little, my full dropper and 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes I don't even get to open Reddit to fucking waste some time before I go to bed. It is just like lay in bed and sit there and just kind of like breathe and listen to the fan. And I doze off. It doesn't make me crash. It doesn't, it's not like melatonin where suddenly my whole body feels just heavy. And most importantly, yep. there's no nightmares. I am prone to like heinous night terrors. And when I used to take melatonin, dude, like the hat lady would come out of the wall in the middle of the night and scare the fuck out of me type night terrors. And the worst part is sometimes like, taking it at home and then going to work, those night terrors would follow me. So I scared the ever living shit out of my shift mates. Hilarious, but haven't experienced that. Haven't had a single night terror since I started using the, um, the out of service formula. And, um, but also the important part that, that I want to reiterate that you mentioned is that the education isn't there. And that's why I feel it's so important to always give you the platform and always have you talk about this stuff. It's because. That first episode, 21, when you came on to talk about CBD, I had multiple people reach out being like, hey, buddy, you're you're putting a bullseye on your back for the department. Like, you're going to find yourself at headquarters. You're peddling drugs, which if you've known me at some point, at any point in my career, I've always been the type that I'm like, I, do, I don't want to say like, I don't care, but I'm like, no, I'm just going to say it. And whatever the fuck happens, happens just because... I don't have, you know, it's not a crusade. I, I live in that chaos. Like I love it. I thrive in it. And that was kind of my reaction. Like, uh, okay. Like, so I'll end up at headquarters and then I'll preach CBD to them. I don't give a shit. 
but it's that sort of it's that fear it is that terror of like you were talking about a three-letter word that's kind of similar to to thc like oh my god like you're gonna get fired we can't do this yeah, yeah. no it's it's it all comes down to finding those experts finding the people who have been the trailblazers in this field and understanding the where the benefits lie for us and just running with it. It, the, the fear has no fear with no information has no room in the fire service and the fear mongering that we've had done to us for generations has to go. And it's up to us to do it now. And it's up to us to use these platforms. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. And I can't do it without people like you because, um, it's hard getting, um, the word out organically and, and lets people talk about it and invite me on and stuff. It, it just, it won't. So I appreciate it. And thank you. Hey friends, I want to take a quick moment to ask you to support the show by leaving a rating and a review on your favorite platform. Your support means the world to us and it helps spread the message to even more people. We've gotten thousands and thousands of listeners and those high ratings help our show become more discoverable, allowing us to reach even more listeners and make an even greater impact. So if you've enjoyed what you heard so far, please take a moment to leave a rating and a review. It only takes a few seconds and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. And now let's get back to the show. So give me a quick rundown of the line of Rescue One CBD products. I can probably do it on my own, but I mean, yeah, I, th- I think I have one of the first, because your topical is now, it's, it's not uh, the yeah, roll-on, it is, is it? Yep. Oh, you're still roll-on. Okay. But there's, okay, tell me about the topical, because that's the newest. Topical I have one of the is, OGs. Um, it's 500 milligrams of CBD with Arnica menthol and um we put in there we, we try to make it completely natural um ingredients there are a couple at the very bottom that are um like binders um and stabilizers so that all this stuff is homogenous like properly mixed in there but if you look at the back of the ingredients it's cbd arnica menthol and a shitload of essential oils that that are there to um to give a cooling effect um and then the heating effect is from like capsicum so yeah Oh, it feels so good. Gets if you put it on and then get get in your gear, it'll heat up like you'll feel it. Um But most importantly, like I'm a big I think I've kept um what's the other one? Tiger yeah. Balm in business for many years with yeah. a variety of shoulder issues. And then, you know, my pillows and my shirts and everything yeah. starts getting stained orange. I and you know, you smell like a fucking old person. I haven't had that at all with the topical. It said, you know, yeah. it said that nice little like yes. warm, That's fuzzy, the idea. That's cold. The idea. But also I see how it type thing. Good. Um, so I've screwed with this formula for years. This is the final one that we landed on and I was totally a mad scientist with it. So I was like putting it on myself and uh, I thought there was something wrong Hell yeah. with it when I went, or I'm sorry, I thought there was something wrong with my foot because I had foot surgery. I put it on my ankle and I'm running around in gear. And, um, this is like hours, hours, hours after those, I put it on in the morning and this is like in the afternoon, I was like working out and I put it on, uh, and I'm in my gear and I'm going up and down the tower and I'm like, my foot is like really warm. I'm like thinking, did I, it doesn't hurt. Like it feels good. I just, I don't know what it is. And then I realized, uh, that it kept happening after I put that stuff on. So the cooling happens really right away. Um, that lasts for 20 or 30 minutes, but, um, the capsicum stays on your skin for hours, hours. This was like eight or nine hours after, and it's consistently for me. I've had other firefighters tell me the same thing. Like if they put this on and get in gear, when they start moving around and they get blood flow, it'll warm up, keep them loose. So it, uh, it's, it's a, it's a favorite of chiropractors too. Um, so that's our topical, um, you know, the one that you'd mentioned earlier was our out of service formula, uh, for sleep. And then that's like a 2000 milligram bottle. Then we have a 1000 milligram bottle. Um, and it comes in unflavored lemon and mint. And, uh, yeah. Oh, Lemon's my le- favorite. Uh, I actually like lemon more than mint. Um, but people, mint is way more popular. Um, I think it's just more familiar, I guess. That's because they don't know any better. We say. Also, like when I was gonna say when you know, like when you go to a McDonald's and you just take your cup, you fill it with every single 
type of soda. That's what I do with the lemon and the mint. Oh, and really? I try to make my that own sounds weird. concoctions. I haven't tried that. It did. I mean, I did it a couple of times just to see if I could get the ratios. But well, so we not um we flavor not our, something I'd recommend. Uh, our lemon and mint with terpenes. So I didn't get like lemon flavoring um, or like anything artificial. It's an extract of limonene that that makes the lemon flavor. Um, and same thing with mint. So you know you can get um, combinations of uh, pinene, which is from pinene. You know, and limonene is actually from lemons, even though it sounds like limes. But these these flavor profiles are from cannabis plants. Um, we didn't get them from cannabis plants. We extracted them from things like like um, uh, limonene is from, like I said, lemons. If we wanted uh, the sleep formula, like terpenes that are from cannabis, like myrcene, we'd get it from mangoes. It's pretty cool technology that you can extract mangoes, mangoes and hops. You can get myrcene from, and it's got like a sedative feeling to it. So, um, like I said, straight up mad scientist stuff where we're just trying to get the optimal amount of terpenes in there from plant other than cannabis to keep that distance from THC. So the, the flavor profile of them is extremely natural, but it's also extremely natural. It either is or it isn't, but it's, it's natural, but it's also, um, it's, it's, uh, it adds to those, to those effects that you get from cannabis, like inflammation and mood, um, because it is more of a broad, what they call a broad spectrum product where you don't just have the CBD molecule, you have other stuff too. So the terpenes, I thought that was the game changer for the out of sleep formula. I didn't realize that it dealt also with the flavor, right? It does. Terpenes are, a, it, it, it's actually what turpentine is made of. And turpentine is, is a bunch of terpenes. Um, and so if you think about what turpentine looks like, if you concentrated terpenes down, that's what it, that's what it looks like. It's like this really thick, viscous, like oily, nasty looking fatty thing. And it's got a, uh, um, it's what gives plants their, their smell, but they also happen to have this, um, this effect on, you know, things like your mood inflammation or, um, your, your like feeling sedated just depends on what terpene you're talking about. So like myrcene is a very, um, prominent one in our sleep formula. That's my favorite terpene for making you feel tired. Um, and so we took that. And that's like the, the most prominent one in our sleep formula, uh, along with limonene and those two kind of chill you out. So, uh, but they do happen to give a, a flavor. I wasn't, I didn't know how the sleep formula was going to taste. I just went and did my research and tried to get as many terpenes that make you feel tired as I could and, and portion them out in there. And then when we made it, it ended up tasting like lavender. So that's, that the flavor It was just, I didn't. I didn't make it like that. The universe did, you know, it's just the way those terpenes just naturally come out. But yeah, so it is a little bit of a flavor profile and smell, but it really, it's, it's the effect. And that, uh, that's the big difference between our out of service and our standard 1000 milligram bottle or what we call our daytime formula. So the nighttime formula has a shitload of terpenes that make you feel tired. The daytime formula doesn't have those tired terpenes in there. They just have, um, flavor terpenes. Yeah, I had the the daytime formula, my locker at the firehouse. Never any Love issues it. with it, and I was kind of baiting, wait, waiting to see what chief would walk by and be like, "The fuck is this?" No, nobody ever bit, but um, from a functional point of view, didn't impede any of my abilities, didn't impair me, didn't do anything. And the way that I explain it to people is that after using it, right after building that level in in the body. I would catch myself being like, hang on, this situation would have stressed me out or given me anxiety a while ago, and somehow I'm just rolling with it. So it's not a quick, like, hit you effect. It's you look in the rear view and you go, oh, shit. Right. I'm yeah, and there's some research that shows as little as 32 milligrams is, an, is uh, enough to reduce anxiety in humans. So that's why we have that 1,000 milligram bottle is 33 milligrams per serving. So that's like the floor of it. Um, the 2,000 milligram bottle, you get double that. You get 66 milligrams per serving. So um, we kind of cover all the bases there. So you got to get ready for vacation. What's in the future for Some of it, on CBD? I'm really excited to talk about. That, you can, that you can share, but, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the next thing's coming up 
are um, we're we're going to start getting into more places. Um, we are getting into distribution a little bit more with like some uh, chiropractors and working more with like um, uh, like storefronts like that, which is which is great for getting the the word out. Um, but also, you know, the, on a, on a smaller level, I'm 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 bringing in people, other firefighters that I've loved and respected for a long time and uh that are really really passionate about this and for the first time like i have a a, a team of people that's all firefighters and that are just they're going to drive this thing forward with me um i'm hoping by the end of the year maybe i'll come on maybe i'll break the news on your podcast maybe i'll be able to keep the promise when we uh we're working on some Do research it. right now and i don't want to talk about it but it's going to be pretty awesome yeah i think it's going to be a big it's deal. gonna be huge that's, and yeah, yeah. when 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 yeah, it we'll, um, finishes up, like uh, we'll talk about the results up here. Um, if I if I do it right, I might be able to present it at FDIC next year. Uh, if they'll let me, I don't know. If it's not up to me. Um, those two things, yeah. And not on the business side. I'm really excited to go back on the shift. In you know, at the end of the year, the beginning of next year, my fire chief was saying I can come out of admin. So if you guys don't know, I'm a I'm gonna. Nerd. I wanted to wait uh, till the end of the show to say that so that you guys would actually listen to the whole thing. Otherwise, you'd probably just turn it off. But I do work in admin as a captain. And uh, so I'm, um, as soon as a uh, spot opens up, which could be at the end of the year, um, my fire chief will, will let me go back to a firehouse, which would be awesome. I'm only halfway through my career, so I don't want to spend the rest of it in admin, you know? I want to be out there. RIP to yeah. your sleep, though. Uh, it's been over a year. I will say that. You know, having a regular schedule is, is good for my circadian rhythm. But, hey, man, uh, juice is worth the squeeze. I love the job. So I, I really, um, for me, it's okay. That's why I take out of service. Shameless plug, buddy. So I take out Hell of service. Hell yeah. You know, like, Hell yeah. I do it at work all the time. And guys are like bitching about their sleep. I just can't. And I'm like, wow, gee, if only you knew somebody that could help, you know, I'm like fucking staring at him. <laughs> but it's also frustrating for me because I'm like, yeah, how many times do you guys hear me talk about this? You know, like y'all, you drive me nuts. Uh, right. No, no, it's it's so funny because it's the clo mm -hmm. the people closest to us are always the last ones. Yeah, I know. To join in, like the it's all right. It took me like almost ten years for people at my firehouse to start getting my leather work. I'm outfitting entire other battalions, like different yeah. departments all throughout the country, and they're like, "Hell, oh, I guess, I guess, can you make me a shield?" But can I like uh, get a discount and like get it done ASAP? Like yeah. you little yeah, shit. Yeah, thanks. Sure, absolutely. No, yeah, what else can I do for you? Yeah, right. Where can our we website, find more about rescue? Uh, one? Rescue one CBD dot com. That's with the number one, and then our Instagram, uh, Rescue One CBD again with the number one. We try to post a lot of stuff on there. Um, you know, we collaborate. We TJ and I are going to start doing Instagram lives, so you guys can check that out uh Hell yeah. i think we have really good conversation and that's kind of exclusive that's going to be just there it's a really good format for that uh we also have a podcast and, and we put it on our youtube channel so anywhere you listen to podcasts you can listen to the rescue one podcast it's a little bit more long form of how we get into stuff um whether it's production whether it's research um just bigger topics so instagram is kind of cool because you can get it like in the tldr version and then the youtube and podcast are like the long form so any one of those hey what's up everybody it's tj here really hoping that you got some awesome value out of these two episodes with john if you haven't noticed yet he is ridiculously smart when it comes to all of these things cbd and the legalities behind it all he is the type of dude who will take a topic and do such a deep dive on it, become an expert that he makes you understand it like he doesn't treat you like an idiot for not knowing he will happily teach you and he will do it well that's why i keep going back to him over and over for not just this stuff but things like business things like career advice so I'm thankful that he came back, and I'm hoping, like I said, that you got some good value out of this. It's kind of, it kind of sucks that 
the rescheduling of marijuana from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 is not going to create the huge landslide change that we expected. But I think it's going to open doors and it's going to open the communication between firefighters and municipalities and fire chiefs to hopefully help bring this highly beneficial treatment to those who need it the most. So again, not quite what we all expected and or wanted, but it's a step in the right direction. And sometimes progress is measured in inches instead of miles, but it's still progress. So keep fighting the battle, keep doing everything that's necessary to make sure we are taken care of and just don't give it up. We never thought we'd be here. So who knows where we're going to be in five to 10 years. For those of you who are new, at the end of every episode, we do a special shout out to our Patreon community members who have just joined. And the whole point of the Patreon community is to really take the idea of building resilient, well-rounded firefighters and giving it a structure and a plan. So as a member, you receive incredible workouts that you can do on a daily basis, not just at a gym, but if you have nothing else more than a firehouse, you can get your work done there because physical fitness is the core of what we do. But we also take into account things like sometimes we need motivation and sometimes we want to do training and we want to take care of ourselves in terms of mobility and stretching. So yes, it is very heavily focused on the physical fitness side of things, our community, but there is so much more. And the most important aspect is that community bit where it's just like-minded firefighters sharing a space, sharing knowledge, information, and all working towards that common goal of being resilient and well-rounded firefighters. So drum roll, please. Let's give a warm welcome and a shout out to Chase from Waitsboro, North Carolina, who just joined us not that long ago. So Chase, welcome to the community. Guys and gals, thank you so much for your continued support, for taking the time to listen to this podcast and for just being awesome. Our communities depend on you. Our crews depend on you, on each other. And it's always humbling and it's always amazing to see so many people who share this belief in the stuff that we do. So before I get sentimental, I'm going to sign out. Be good, be safe. I'll catch you in a couple weeks. Hey everyone, it's TJ here from Keep the Promise. As you know, this podcast is all about helping firefighters become more resilient and well-rounded so that they can be a force for good within their fire department and their community. But today I want to talk to you about something that's just as important, and that is supporting firefighters who are going through tough times. When one of our fellow firefighters is off work because they have to go to the Center for Excellence, they have to go to rehab, they have mental health issues, or they have other health issues, it really takes away their support system and it wreaks havoc on their finances and their family's finances. And many times these brothers and sisters are left to struggle alone away from their support system and the people who love them without the resources they need to recover. That's why I'm setting a bold new goal. And that is to reach 150 total patrons on Patreon so that we can start a fund to help firefighters and their families during these challenging times. And I need your help to make it happen. With your support on Patreon, we'll be able to provide financial assistance to firefighter families who are battling things like addiction, depression, and cancer. We're going to help alleviate the financial strain that can come with being away from the fire department so that our brothers and sisters can focus on healing and recovering. Now, reaching 150 total patrons is a big goal, but I believe that we can do it together. And when we do, we'll be able to make a real difference in the lives of those who serve and protect alongside us. So, if you're not already a patron, I invite you to join us today. Head over to joinkeepthepromise.com and sign up today. Again, that is joinkeepthepromise.com. And if you already are a patron, thank you so much for your support. You'll be receiving some exclusive rewards and perks as a way of saying thanks. Together, let's show our fellow firefighters that we've got their back just like they always have ours. Thank you for listening. Let's get started with the episode.